So there's a, the, the requirements for a, a um, successful lean journey are pretty simple. It's all common sense, focused application of common sense. When you go and do and make these changes, when we did a single minute exchange of dye effort on the, fact, on the lab down there, was that hard to understand? Who, who does that? Masson did that, right? So, I mean, it was fairly simple. It was straightforward, right? Common sense. We don't, we don't want to have to unbolt and rebolt and all that stuff, right? We want something that just fits it and we can put our part in and do it. Simple, right? Except, you know, somebody has to actually think about that and somebody has to actually do it, right? So, it's common sense stuff. We just need to be able to implement them. So, the challenge is in implementing that so, and then sustaining the, 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 uh, the transformation. So, does anybody remember their world history, Cortez? Anybody remember world history? Yeah. Cortez, do you remember what Cortez did when he made it to the new world? Huh? He burned the boats. If you burn the boats, you can't go back, right? You pretty much said forward. We're going forward. So part of the challenge of this in, in sustaining, if you don't burn the boats, if you don't make it where you can't revert back to your former method, people will revert back to their former method. We have a, a UAH has some, I was up at Steelcase a couple of weeks ago in, in Athens, and UAH had a couple of um, uh, senior design teams out there working on a project. And it's supposed to be on improvements, but they found out they're not even following the standards that they have because they didn't make it where you can't go back and do it the, the, the old way. So people are going back and do it the old way. So how do you improve if you, can't, if you don't have a standard? You can't, right? You can't make improvements if you don't have a standard. So you need to make sure that in sustaining the transformation that you have a way of, of improving, all, uh, of maintaining that. And then transformation thinking into behavior and action is a complex activity. And every single one of these is unique. You will never find an opportunity for you to make changes in your uh, organization that is the same in every organization. It's always going to be different. So what you need to understand are the principles of change so that you can apply those principles, but the way you implement them each time is going to be different. So how would you answer these questions? I'm a manager. I know I need to make changes. Where do I start? You, you come in and you say, yeah, we did this lean in, in college, and I understand it, and I think it would be great to implement this thing. And your boss goes, okay, great. Where do we start? Okay. So, so we have training. We have be, your, uh, be specific about your goals. What else? Finding out from the employees what's actually going on. Yeah, do a, do a value stream or process maps? Absolutely, good job. So this is, some, uh, this is from the Lean Academy, and LAI was the Lean Aerospace Initiative. Later it was turned the Lean Advancement Initiative at MIT. And I was, uh, we were the only center outside of MIT that was involved with this at, you know, when I was with the uh, University of Alabama in Huntsville. And this is, the, this is the type of training we were doing with, with people at that time. So the Lean Enterprise model was meant to do exactly what you're talking about there in, in policy deployment, is that you had human-oriented practices. My little thing's not showing human-oriented practices, and we had process-oriented practices. And you have to do both of them at the same time to accomplish a, a transformation. But this gave you an idea of what kind of strategies and processes and procedures we needed to put in place to be able to execute a lean, in, uh, uh, a lean enterprise transformation. Now, I'm in, there's like you know, 35 more slides. So we're going to go through these really fast. Okay? So understanding that this model I'm going to show you is something that you can go and, and pull up and look at and, and find more details. And if you want more details from it, let me know and I'll send you, I'll, I'll give you some stuff. But this was the Lean Enterprise uh, model. And the Lean Enterprise model, how would you know what to go implement? Well, you, then we had this transition to Lean uh, model that we used. So this set the overall upper goals of what we're trying to do. This was how we were going to go and implement those tools. So this was the transition to Lean Roadmap. And it started out with Enterprise Strategic Planning, where you create the business case, you do the focus on customer value, you learn all about what your organization is actually doing, where you need to go. So you make a decision to pursue this transformation. Then you go into the adopting a lean paradigm. This is where you build your vision, you convey the urgency. Why are, this is the why. Why are we going to do this? That's extremely important. And then this would lead you into what we call the long-term long cycle. And the long-term cycle is where we would find Kakaku going on, right? So we're doing things like focusing on the value stream. The value stream is going to be the current state, what we currently have, but it's also going to show us in about two to three years where would we like to be in this. That's what your future state should be telling you. 24 to 36 months out, where do I want my process to be? Now, your vision back here should be telling us in five years, 10 years, where do I want to be, right? What do I want to be doing? But here on the value stream level, we're talking about what can we actually execute in the near term? And then that leads us to a detailed lean vision, and that's going to lead us to some structured behavior. So organizing for the implementation, aligning incentives, all those things that, we, that Tom was talking about, getting your, getting your metrics in place with, your, with the goals of the organization and making sure that we're doing all that, the ocean economy planning that we, that we talked about. All of that is where this will take place. Make sure that we're aligning ourselves, our efforts on the shop floor and in the, in the, the organization are aligning with the goals of the corporation. And then that leads us into what we call a short-term cycle where we have lean transformation framework. This is where we're going to identify and prioritize our activities. We're going to commit some resources to it. We're going to do our education and training. This is where we start building our army of, of continuous improvement uh, personnel. And then that leads us into implementing those through detailed plans. This is where we do Kaizen. Okay? 
And then Kaizen leads us into how are we going to now monitor the process, how are we going to continue to do the changes and understand if we're making progress towards our vision, towards our goals, all of that. And this short-term cycle happens fast. This is a lot of quick iterations. This is the everyday come in and make a change on how we're doing our job Kaizen. The bigger loop, all this information we're getting here feeds back into our value stream that we update. And our value stream now tells us what the next thing is we want to go do. And that's the longer term cycle of it. And we're going to do a lot of Kaizen here, and we're going to run into some problems where we need to employ Kakaku technology radical change up there. So you can see how all of this needs to work together as one unit of activity. Now, that explanation is going to be like the next 20 slides, what I just told you. So then that leads us to, well, how do I know if I'm making progress? There's several tools out there. One was called LeSAT. LeSAT is a, is a uh, tool for self-assessment of your lean capabilities that was developed. I have another one I'm going to show you that's just a one-page kind of plant walkthrough assessment that you can use. But uh, it's, a, it's a way of going about it. And there's some actual research going on right now from some people I know that are trying to develop better tools to understand your level of lean comprehension and lean capability within your organization. So the lean assessment tool gives you different levels of where you are going from. I have some awareness of the practice to exceptionally well-defined and innovative approach. Um, I've got another paper that I did about five years ago that actually aligned these levels of capability with Bloom's taxonomy for, for learning that you that, uh, be happy to make available to if, you, if you're interested in it. So these are the tools for the lean journey. It's a constant iteration, always reviewing where we are. This is what Toyota does naturally. This is what we have to figure out how to do in our organizations that are not quite so natural. So the enterprise strategic thinking, that's where we create that business case. We look at, we have mission, vision, and values. We put together that in a two to five year strategic plan. This is actually from a steel metal building company. And I thought this was, this was amazing. They, they defined down to, to five key business drivers. They had their measures for next year, what they're actually going to go try to do, and they you built it all on a foundation of lean enterprise. So this is a company who is aligning their mission and vision with the capability of developing, of, of implementing that through lean, which I thought was re really unique. Then you adopt the lean paradigm, you foster that lean learning, you make that commitment. You've got to have senior management not only buy-in but leading this. So the reason why senior management needs to lead this is if we just train people, we end up with a, with a group that has somewhat the same goals. Every once in a while you'll find somebody that's not, right? But we're working towards some of the same goals. If we get a group with vision going, everybody's focused and aligned on the same goals. It's a very efficient way of utilizing your resources for change. There's also a creative tension. This is out of Peter Singe's Fifth Discipline. If you haven't read that, you need to, because it's, uh, it's a good book on learning how to see the overall system. And what he's talking about here is that you, here's your current reality, and if you put a rubber band around your hand and you stretch, this is where my vision is, what does that cause to the rubber band? Tension, right? It stretches. So what are the ways I have to, re re to relieve that tension? Reduce the gap, yeah, but what are my two choices? I can bring that vision down, or I can change my current reality, right? Toyota says we're going to change the current reality through Kaizen and Kakaku. That's in policy deployment and all of the other things that they have as part of their structure. Unfortunately, what happens in a lot of companies is we start to bring that vision down and say, well, we might have reached too far. No, you just didn't change your current reality. So understanding that this, this little understanding of current reality division is extremely important when you're, when you're trying to defend an a, a, a implementation. The enterprise leader needs to develop uh, enterprise goals and metrics that encourage and promote lean. Do they do this in a vacuum? No. no. Need to have everybody engaged, but it's the leader's job to do it. It's not the Kaizen team's job to do that. So don't, don't do it in a, in a vacuum, but uh, you, it is the leader's job. And you've got to decide, is this going to be a program of the month or is it going to be foundational change, right? The, the metal building company said this is foundational change in the way we do our business. To, unfortunately, the, the program of the month is that, that auto supplier supervisor that I showed you his quote early on, right? It's, I've seen 23 of these things come and go. I'm, I'll, I will outlast them. Get it, foster learning. There's, there's practice experience here. And then there's education and training. So there's two, capa two things. One is building skills and one is building knowledge. And you have to have knowledge and skills to overcome uh, a lot of the resistance to change. And then you focus on the value stream by mapping those and internalizing that vision. And you have to involve the key stakeholders. It's important that the people who are engaged in that, in that uh, uh, value stream have buy-in to what they're, what they're doing, like the guys at the McDuffie Coal Terminal. Then you're going to take those, uh, they're, they're going to break down those value streams into the life cycle processes and enabling inf infrastructure processes. And you, you're going to have to work on all of these areas, right? We said there's human components, there's process components in the LEM that you have to bring together to, to make this really happen. But you can't go do all those at one time. So you have to determine what are the critical ones, how do we going to step our way through this? And then at the operational level, you want to have, I mean, at the, these levels, you want to have uh, metrics for operations, supervisor, and senior management, and they should flow. One should build on the other. Tom talks about how when he did, he had his charts up there, right? And everybody's information built up to his information. That's what this has to do. That shows alignment. And then you have to involve all the st stakeholders. So a stakeholder is any group or individual can, be, can affect or is affected by the organization's objectives. Right? So stakeholders is a big group, usually, of, of, uh, of people. Then you have the long-term cycle is, is uh, developing that lean structure behavior. The organiza organizing for lean means typically looking at a much flatter, uh, more efficient organization than you have in typical American uh, hierarchical organizations. So flexible, agile, uh, suppliers are partners, 
uh, focus on the customer, all those things are, are when, we, when you're looking at, at changing your organization to adopt to a lean philosophy, those are things you need to be doing. And then those key business drivers need to be, uh, you need to be able to uh, bring those into what are the actual things we're going to go measure. So if they're looking at team member satisfaction, you might do a satisfaction uh, survey or a safety survey, looking at the safety numbers or training. If you're looking at uh, from operational performance, you know, what do we have in terms of waste? What is our current productivity? Qual our customer satisfaction? You know, what does our on-time delivery look like? Those are things that we're going to use to actually metrics that support our key business drivers and our overall alignment of organization. So there's all kinds of barriers to this implementation, roadblocks. We've got inconsistent direction, which is a leadership thing, lack of commitment, which is a leadership thing, skepticism, which is typically the workforce, lack of trust coming from the workforce, like the MRDEC stuff I showed you, mixed signals coming in, okay, that's the non alignment, non alignment of our goals with what I'm telling you to go do. We have just typical resistance to change, because I just don't like change in general. The politics and then not admitted here syndrome, right? You can come tell me how Toyota does it. Well, you know, we're Chrysler. We do it better. No, not really. So the way you overcome that is you break through those barriers with understanding of a lot, the, developing the philosophy, creating knowledge and understanding, and then giving people the skills to go and change those, those, uh, their uh, current situation. Then in the short-term cycle, we have identify and prioritize. This is where we do the PDCA activities. And this is where you would use your A3s. This is where we figure out how to do project selection. One way, one way I wanted to show you, has anybody ever used a pick chart? Okay, so pick chart is, is you know, this is the impact from low impact to high impact. This is the effort from low effort to high effort. So I have something that's low impact and high effort, kill it. You're not gonna go, don't go do that, that's silly. If you have something though that is high impact and uh, low effort, then I'm gonna go implement those. You're gonna consider those to take a little more effort to do. This is where Kakaku would be. This is where Kaizen will be. This is where senior design projects are. So you have roles uh, in lean implementation, champion, leader, sponsor, team, cheerleader should be in there somewhere. Uh, implement, implementing lean initiatives we talked about. This is where you would you'd, uh, typically put together a project charter so that your team actually has the authority to go and do what they, what they need to go do. Short-term cycle, sustaining, then you have to, you have to invest in the process. Uh, do not use it to reduce headcount. That will kill any effort that you ever try to do. And you will be, you'll be labeled forever as the person who gets rid of jobs. Bad idea. So this is the uh, ongoing. You need to continue to, to work through this all the time. These are all the tools we have for lean journey. This is an example of some companies that have done this. And, and Tom told you three years to see uh, see actual improvement. So this was 1999. We started the company. Look at all the red. Three years later, red starting to go away. Yellow starting to show up. Five years later, we've done away with all the red. So understand that this type of transformation is not really fast, but it had, you have to be dedicated to it. So the lean journey starts with awareness and training. Then you implement it through Kaizen. You uh, implement future state and culture change. Then you improve and standardize systems. And then you gradually work towards a world class organization. So Toyota will tell you that they are probably here. Most people recognize them as world-class organizations, but they will tell you that they're right here uh, for the most part. So understand you're not going to move from here to world-class organizations. You've got to go through all these steps to get there and understand it. All right, 61 slides in 45 minutes. Um, so your, your test today is give me a definition for Kaizen and give me a definition for Kakaku. You see, by the end of the semester, I have learned I can stay within time. And for those of y'all who are interested, this is the uh, this is the factory floor plant walkthrough that we that we used. So as we would go through a company and and uh, talk to them about their, their areas and what we saw as we made a walkthrough and in, in, uh, uh, interrogated uh, some of the people in there, we would fill out this this sheet, and you would be able to go in and that then make some recommendations on where to help them start. It really didn't help us a whole lot. What it did is help the whoever was the manager we were working with to understand this is accomplishable, but this is where you need to go start. Then here, we can help you make, put a plan together. And then these were some of the uh, percentages and, and metrics we would use to, to help them understand what kind of improvement they could make after we looked at their, uh, their other information.